In this video, I'll be discussing the controversy surrounding Hans Asperger that's been surfaced in the last two months. Coming up. Hey guys, I'm Dan. I have Asperger syndrome, ADHD, OCD, and dyslexia. I make weekly videos on this type of content. So if you're new around here, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any more videos. Oh, and if you want to hit that notification bell to be notified every single time I upload a video or go live, that'll be awesome so you don't miss any future videos. In this video, I'll be covering what the controversy is, how this affects the community, what does the future hold from this controversy, and my own personal insight and thoughts on the controversy. So before we get started, I just want to tell you you guys to leave a comment in the comment section below with what your thoughts are on this whole controversy after you've watched the video or if you already know and you wanted to see this for more information let me know right now what you're thinking about the controversy surrounding Hans Asperger because I'd love to know. Oh there's something so awesome about green tea it like really relaxes me and I've got green tea in this mug it's just so good. Mm. I highly recommend anybody if you're not really a green tea lover go out and get some just get some in unbleached bags it tastes so much good and this YouTube cup just kind of like adds to the aesthetic. Okay, cool. So I don't normally do like talking head videos like this about topics in the news, but this time I decided that I would uh, address this one because a lot of people have been talking about it. And Hans Asperger, for anybody who doesn't know, was the guy who first, um, well, him and a guy called Leo Kenner both did separate research. Leo Kenner was in the US, and I, th I believe, and uh, Hans Asperger was in Germany. And they were both researching personality disorders or personality conditions in young people, which then evidently became autism. It wasn't coined autism until a little later on in Hans Asperger's career. And it wasn't called Asperger syndrome until a few years after when it was like named honorary of the discovery or the research that he had done on those children. Now for many many years Hans Asperger had been put on this pedestal to being like the one of the founding fathers of autism and autism research and for good reason because the research was there, his published papers and documents on the subject were pretty tip top and uh, he'd been a pretty sound guy in the research area and the founding of autism studies uh, right up until the 90s and I think he died in the late 80s. Now this has been the, the way forever and the diagnosis for the the DSM actually used Hans Asperger, Asperger syndrome as a classification label for a diagnosis of a specific set of characteristics on the autism spectrum that relate to um, like social skills, um, above average to um, to an average IQ set, um, no delay in speech, and um, some other kind of obsessive zoning in focused interest or narrow interest in certain topics. And these became the, the base set of studies for the triad of impairment and also that of the diagnosis of Asperger syndrome. Now being somebody with Asperger syndrome myself, it's an interesting concept uh, to have a label or a diagnosis with that name and it's kind of empowering because for years without a diagnosis you think, you know, who am I, what am I doing and all this kind of stuff. And in the end, the only thing that matters is, is that if you're comfortable with what's happening. And when I had the diagnosis of Asperger syndrome, I was kind of happy that I had that. And I was really comfortable in the fact that I was able to then relate to a set of uh, people in a community group. And then you are a little bit more satisfied with what happens. You know, you understand everything. Now, with the controversy, um, about two months ago, a paper was released um, by a guy called Kretsch, I think his name was, or a researcher called Kretsch. And he released a paper which I will link in the description below if you're really interested in checking that out, you can have a read for it yourself, um, where he states there was two letters um, written by Hans Asperger to the Nazis who had a specific concentration camp um, for um, doing horrible things, horrific things to children who they deemed uh, like unfit for, uh, for society. Now um, up until recently we had no idea that Hans Asperger had any connection to any of this kind of stuff and um, nobody had thought or anything other than just that he wasn't involved but he was in Nazi Germany during the uh, Third Reich and uh, that the the Nazis uh, you know he was a German person in Nazi Germany at that time working now there was a set of um, uh, concentration camps that did horrible experiments and just disgusting things on children and people in general um, where they used to send people there for human testing it was horrible during the Holocaust um, it should never ever be repeated these letters that surfaced are communications between Hans Asperger and the Nazi authorities of the Third Reich in how uh, Hans Asperger categorized people so some of the letters actually say that Hans Asperger found children with um, uh, enhanced abilities, kind of what he was labeling as Asperger syndrome at the time, he didn't call it that, but 
those children were of use to the German kind of super soldier society and the Nazi kind of agenda, so those children were safe. Now the other children who were uh, maybe more um, on the classic autism scale, I don't like using labels, but this is the only way I can convey this information. Now the letters that were discovered by the authorities from Hans Asperger actually quoted that um, he had uh, referred some children who were unfit for society into these specific concentration camps where he no doubt knew what the Nazis and the Third Reich were doing to these children and these people, which is just horrific. Now, when you kind of look at this information, you kind of think, well, what is, you know, how, how did this man do this, you know, because it's inhumane, it's, it's horrible, it's the worst thing in the world, why would you even want to do this? Um, and it, it, it kind of sickens you. And a lot of the community now are wondering, like, what's going to happen now that we have this controversy out? Now, how does this affect the community? Now, like I said, the community were first really taken and struck by this. Um, this information is factual to all accounts that we know about. Um, the papers seem legit, and the letters signed by Hans Asperger, or well, these two letters signed by Asperger, um, were, were legitimate, and they seem to be quite disturbing. And the community has left one shook and completely shocked by this revelation. Two, there's a sense of detachment now because you have this labeling or this this diagnostic nomenclature of Asperger syndrome and then yet you have this horrible stigma attached to it now because of the guy who set it out. Now a lot of people in the community have changed some of their groups, so instead of having like the Asperger's Association, they've changed it to ASD Association, and I know that people are now using the term um, Autism Spectrum Condition rather than Asperger's Syndrome, um, or just Autism as it's a blank kind of like overall, uh, you know, spectrum, saying it's just an Autism Spectrum Condition. But then again, a lot of people like the identification of knowing that they have Asperger's Syndrome, and that's on the diagnosis paper, and, and they like that because that's how they identify to a set of people. Um, and since the autism spectrum is a spectrum and it's large, a lot of people enjoyed their, their diagnosis of Asperger's syndrome. So where does that leave the community? Well, there's a lot of questions raised and there's a lot of debate to be had. There is an ongoing debate because this only came out a few months ago and the community is kind of in, still in shock and in debate of what we're going to do. Is the term going to be used? Now, on the medical side of it, when they go to diagnose people, the Asperger's syndrome nomenclature was actually taken off of the DSM uh, classification of diagnosing people with mental health illnesses, issues or neurological conditions such as Asperger's syndrome and autism um, about two years ago. So the fact that most people now don't really get a diagnosis of Asperger's syndrome, it's more the community who had had the diagnosis before of Asperger's syndrome, what do they do, how do they identify and how are they going to move forward. If you're watching this, this is the very first video to me and you want to kind of check out something else, I did a video on how to test for Asperger's syndrome, I will leave it in a card above here and I will also leave link it in the description below so you can check that out, do a little bit of a home test to see if you have, or anybody you know have Asperger's syndrome um, because it's a cool little test. So what does the future hold uh, for the community now that the revelation has uh, come out? Well to be honest with you, I don't know and I'm not sure anybody else knows. I know that if we continue to use the DSM-5 way of classifying, diagnosing people with neurological and mental health conditions, then Asperger's syndrome isn't going to be a diagnosis nomenclature labeling uh, for the next, you know, until they change it against something else. So um, Asperger's syndrome, the term may die with a set generation of people. Um, but in terms of the community and how they want to go forward with it, again, this is open to debate and I'd love to hear your input in the description below. So what are my personal thoughts on this? Like, okay, so let's just, we need a drink before we get into this. <laughs> some, some good tea. Also, the tea is decaf because I don't drink caffeine because uh, my ADHD, it makes me kind of a bit cranky. So um, rather than be like super hyperactive and uncontrollable, I kind of stay off the caffeine because it helps me feel a bit more grounded. So my personal uh, thoughts on this is, I mean, look, I'm, I'm utterly disgusted. I can't believe that this person did this. Um, and it does make me kind of, not ashamed, but I don't like to be attached to that name as like being Asperger's syndrome. And on my diagnosis paper, it has Asperger's syndrome, you know, slash autism spectrum condition. Um, how will this affect me? I don't think it will affect me 
really, apart from the fact that I have people ask me questions about it, this why I'm addressing it in a video. But we have to remember a few things. Um, in America, after the Second World War, the Americans actually hired a bunch of Nazi Third Reich horrible um, evil doctor kind of um, uh, scientist people and put them over to America to work and they paid them a big wage. I think the UK did it as well um, and nobody kind of batted an eyelid about that. They were using these awful men to push their society forward after the Second World War. So it's kind of like a, a needs and must basis but still these people had um, this horrible past and they were not very nice people. Um, also if you look at things like um, the Autobahn in, in Germany, they're still using those roads that were built by Hitler uh, and also the uh, Volkswagen which is the people's car which was created in conjunction with Hitler and a Polish slave um, that he kind of encaptured or imprisoned would you say I say slave because he obviously wasn't paying the guy to work for the for the Nazis um, now nobody kind of wants to rename the Volkswagen car after kind of Hitler was the guy that designed it and named it um, so you have to ask the question well, why are people so um, uh, you know concerned about the the, the Hans Asperger thing but you know in, in the whole, all honesty, I think that we shouldn't really glamorize anybody of anything to do with the Nazis and it should die with it. Maybe the right decision was to change the name of the uh, the Volkswagen cat and maybe the people who uh, actually took these people from Germany to work in the United States and the UK should be prosecuted. But who knows? That's just my personal opinion on it. I don't know how I think about it. I don't know how I feel yet about having Asperger's syndrome and this the controversy happen. Um, but you know, it's, it's something that is definitely open to debate and I'm open to change and stuff. So I'd love to know your opinions on it. If you guys would like to check out any of my other videos I'll leave a link up here and if you subscribe to my channel you'll see more lovely awesome videos from me and I'll see you guys in the next one cheers